Well, holy flippity flip flop flap and smokes, everyone. It has begun. We have just had announcement after announcement after these companies' earnings today, plus more, that there is going to be huge amounts of layoffs coming. We got this latest jobs report that huge amounts of jobs were created. Well, people, I think this is a, a lagging indicator. I think what we're getting these announcements from these huge companies that are announcing layoffs after layoffs, we are going to be seeing in the months ahead, we're going to see the unemployment rate tick up. Because also what happened and the reason why these companies are announcing huge layoffs is because they've reported their earnings. Their earnings haven't come in as strong as expected or they've come in below estimates. And even if they have beat the estimates, they're giving low or weak guidance. So everyone, we all need to pay attention to what's happening in the layoff space right now, because it could be your job next. And even if you don't lose your job, you need to understand what's happening with layoffs to see how it's gonna affect the markets and how it's gonna affect the economy. So ladies and gentlemen, you know the drill. Let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into the news, the facts, and the data. Okay, so first things first, everyone. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm gonna be going over much more companies He's announcing much more layoffs in a moment. Look at this. JP Morgan cuts hundreds more mortgage workers amid housing woes. So what we've been seeing in the housing market, specifically the mortgage sector, is a lot of people aren't refinancing. We've seen home sales collapse, and this is causing a huge recession in the mortgage sector. Listen to this. JP Morgan, Chase & Co. cut hundreds of mortgage employees this week, adding to job losses across the industry as home lending businesses continue to be hurt by elevated interest rates. But it just gets worse. JP Morgan's origination volume slumped 60% last year as the Federal Reserve rate hikes cooled a pandemic era boom. So that is absolutely crazy run. Mortgage originations plummeted 60% since last year. And while we've had a recent uptick in mortgage applications of around 18% last week, that's because the 10-year US Treasury has plummeted from around 4.3% and it hit a low of around 3.4%. But what I expect to happen is once the Federal Reserve announces, no, we are still doing more rate hikes, get it market, hello, wakey, wakey, the rate hikes aren't over, then we're going to see the 10-year Treasury tick back up again, which, which is like what we're seeing now. It's increased by about 20, 25 basis points from its lows, while we're going to see mortgage demand continue to remain uh, suppressed. Wait, there's more. Look at this. Zoom, the boom, the turn to doom. Zoom to lay off nearly 15% of its staff as the pandemic wanes. So I'm sure we all know that Zoom had a huge boom during the lockdowns, or businesses were using Zoom, or organizations were using Zoom, uh, schools were using Zoom, friends were chatting via Zoom. So they saw an unprecedented boom. And unfortunately, they got a bit too optimistic thinking that this uh, kind of growth would stay forever or continue forever while well, now they're having to start cutting costs and cutting costs aggressively. But people, I don't know if you saw what happened to Affirm today. They got absolutely slaughtered. Look at this. So Affirm cuts 19% of its workforce and shares tank on earnings. You can see here uh, in the after hours, it's down nearly 20%. And this is the stocks that just keeps on taking. Your returns, that is. So what was the root cause of this, everyone? Well, the CEO said the root cause of where we are today is that I acted too slowly as the macroeconomic changes unfolded. Wow, so at least he's being honest here, everyone. He acted too slowly to the macroeconomic picture that he's changing. And that's what we're seeing now. And I think many other CEOs are probably in his position. It's been so hard to try to find workers over the past two years. They don't want to let go of their staff. But unfortunately, because of the macroeconomic picture with high interest rates, uh, with consumer spending falling, with people having debt at record levels, having savings at record lows, they're not going to be able to keep up this earning growth and more layoffs are going to have to be announced. And this will have a domino effect. As more companies announce layoffs, people have less money to spend. And then that means their company's earnings are going to fall lower and lower. And it was a big miss, everyone. The company reported a loss per share of $1.10 for its fiscal second quarter of 2023, while analysts were anticipating a loss of $0.98 cents per share, according to Redfinite. It also missed revenue expectations, reporting $400 million in revenue for the quarter compared to analyst estimates of $416 million. And what's even more brutal for these Affirm employees, it's nearly effective immediately. They're going to be laid off as of tomorrow. But you're probably thinking, well, okay, three companies announcing huge layoffs today. That must be the end of it. No, people, I'm not even halfway through yet. Every single time I wake up in the morning, check the news, I'm seeing dozens and dozens of companies announce layoffs. And look at these two huge companies that just announced massive layoffs. So look at this. Dell is going to cut 6,650 jobs as they've been battered by plunging PC sales. You're starting to see a trend here, everyone. A lot of these companies that saw the boom during 2020, 2021, 2022 from all the stimulus checks, from all the stay-at-home plays with all the people 
buying things uh, for their home when they were in lockdown, while we're starting to see these companies now facing huge losses as the economy gets back to normal. But even me, I was shocked in how much of a huge reduction in demand that has been for computers and desktops right now. So after the pandemic era boom, Dell and other hardware makers have seen cratering demand. Industry analyst IDC said to preliminary data showed personal computer shipments dropped sharply in the fourth quarter of 2022. And listen to this, how big. Among major companies, Dell saw the largest decline, 37% compared with the same period in 2021. This is according to IDC, Dell generates about 55% of its revenue from PCs. So this is absolutely massive, everyone. Demand for computers have dropped 37%. And this is huge for Dell because that accounts for 55% of their revenue. And I think unfortunately for these tech companies, they're going to have demand become weaker and weaker because a lot of people use their stimulus checks to buy a bunch of technology gear uh, during the lockdowns. And so they're not going to need new tech, I think, for at least another couple of years. Unless you're trying to keep up with the Joneses and get the latest and greatest every six months, which is just a complete waste of money and why people have maxed out credit cards and ultra low savings. But listen to how bad it's actually got in the tech sector with all these tech companies announcing layoffs combined. So layoffs have hammered the tech sector in recent months, including many of Dell's peers and competitors. HP Inc., similarly exposed to the PC market, announced in November a reduction of as many as 6,000 workers. Cisco System Inc. and International Business uh, Machines Corp. each said they would eliminate about 4,000 workers. And the tech sector announced, listen to this, 97,000 job cuts in 2022. And guess how much is it up by? 649% compared with the previous year. So that's right, just in 2022, we heard nearly 100,000 layoffs were announced. And it's going to get even worse in 2023 because that's when it's going to get really bad for the tech sector, like we're seeing now. Our consumers aren't buying tech right now. A lot of people aren't online all day like they used to be. And high interest rates affect a lot of these uh, profitless tech companies a lot more than value companies. But okay, breaking news, as I was making this video, the company that announced the most layoffs is guess what Disney so look at this Disney to cut 7,000 jobs as it slashes costs and reorganizes and you know if your stock's plunging all you got to do is announce a few layoffs we can see here uh, Disney shares are up 5% in after hours so Disney says it will be reorganizing into three divisions entertainment ESPN and Parks and Experiences. So the reason why they're cutting 7,000 jobs, it plans to cut 5.5 billion in costs, including 3 billion in content savings. Well, for me, and I'm sure many of you, this is no surprise. When you go something, you go something. I think you know what I mean. And did you hear that everyone? There's going to be $3 billion in content savings because we all know the latest movies and latest TV shows Disney has been producing has been absolutely garbage. So people, we're seeing huge amounts of layoffs, but actually something I saw today, this one chart was absolutely alarming. And this is showing the trend. While you may feel like your standard of living over the past 30, 40 years has been declining, well, we've got a chart that proves why it's declining and something needs to happen or there's going to be huge unrest soon. So look at this chart here, everyone. Stocks gains outpacing wage growth. So we can see here this red line is the S&P 500 and see this black line here, this pretty much flat line um, since the 1970s is on a little bit of a incline. That is uh, average hourly earnings. We can see here the black line, it was pretty much above the stock market um, in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, but we saw um, a huge trend reversal in the 90s. We can see here during the uh, tech um, bubble, the, the dot-com bubble, we can see here the stock actually rallied, uh, people's wages didn't follow. Then again in 2008, uh, the stock market rallied, wages didn't grow. Uh, but then ever since uh, 2010, the stock market has gone an absolute tear, but wages have never been uh, further away from the stock market. And in order for the stock market to come back in line to the trend that it was back with average hourly earnings, the S&P 500 would have to fall all the way back down to around 1,000 or 1,500. Again, I'm not saying this will happen or it will drop that low, but this chart shows why the middle class is getting absolutely decimated while corporations announce record profits. And this is really what's happened since central banks have started QE and they printed money and bailed out the markets ever since the 90s in the dot-com bubble. And when they've kept interest rates at low forever, they've been pumping asset prices, but people's wages haven't been keeping up and the rich have just got richer and the poor have got poorer. So everyone, I know what you're thinking, well, okay, what does this mean for you in simple terms? Well, what this means, everyone, the data we've been getting is lagging. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see more layoffs coming, the unemployment rate tick up, and what we've been seeing right now is, yes, more jobs growth has been coming, 
that's because a lot of people have got a second part-time job or they're working multiple part-time jobs and a lot of the jobs that are being created are low paying jobs and a lot of the layoffs we're getting uh, right now are being announced are high paying jobs. So it's gonna take a while for these layoffs to flow onto the leisure and hospitality sector because these people that have these high paying jobs that go to these services or use these services, they're not gonna have money to spend at leisure and hospitality and then they're gonna to start to lose their jobs and that's when we'll see the unemployment rate tick up. Again, we've been on an unsustainable path over the past 30, 40 years, but central banks continue to intervene in the markets prop it up they've been able to manipulate the data to hide inflation but they can't hide inflation anymore i think what's going to happen with the cpi coming out next week we could see cpi at 0.6 for example and that will be inflation annualized that 7.2 percent that'll be above what it is right now and so the markets aren't prepared for it all if the federal reserve has to lift interest rates to six percent or seven percent to bring inflation down so again i'm waiting patiently on the sidelines before i see confirmation that the federal reserve is actually going to pivot i'll wait before they actually do pivot not going to speculate if they're going to pivot and then that's when i'll start buying back in the markets but everyone what do you think about all of this let me know down below now for my loyal viewers and subscribers who are watching you're awesome thanks for watching i'll see you all in the next video